One of the biggest things that really drains me in my job in coaching men, specifically going through a divorce or bad breakup or even a death of their spouse, is hearing their stories, is listening to them, is to giving them that space that they need to tell their side of the story. I've noticed a lot in society that we're always listening to the woman's side. We're always listening to how bad he was or what he didn't do or what potential he had and he squandered it. There is some truth to that. And I understand that there's always two sides of the story, but there's really three. There's always his side and her side. And in the middle, there's the truth. And so when I'm coaching these guys or I'm listening to these guys and I'm offering them that space that they need to at least talk to somebody who's a complete stranger, who has no fucking skin in the game, who is just generally there to try to listen, to try to help uplift in any way I can. Not to give them hope where there is no hope, not to throw sunshine up their ass or to tell them what they wanna hear, but just to listen. Just to give a man that space. It's very freeing for men. It's something that a lot of people don't do. And so when I'm listening to the stories, and oftentimes these stories, they're kind of carbon copies of one another. I mean, at the end of the day, there is a divorce, there is a death, there is a breakup, there is a finality to something they're going through and they want to get it back. They want the potential to maybe get back with their wife or to get back with their girlfriend, but they just clamp up and they stop talking because society is so good at telling us to man up. Don't be a pussy. You got this one more rep, go through it. And it doesn't work that way. Life is not like that. The more you push stuff down in your life, the more you say, I got this, the more you <clears throat> try to deflect what's trying to come up, that emotion that's trying to come up, at some point these men blow up. At some point, something's gonna happen to these men where they might have a nervous breakdown, they might have a heart attack, a severe panic attack. Something's gonna happen to these men because your body can only handle so much stress. Your body can only handle so much of that heartache, so much abuse. The biggest thing that I try to do to these guys when they're just venting, at least those initial calls, or maybe it's through an email uh, service that I offer, and where they're literally emailing me what's going on in their life. After giving them that space, after allowing them to at least even hit that send button, man, and they, they sent it to somebody else who they know they're going to read it, and they know they're going to get a response back. That's how this works. Doing a video call with me or uh, through a Zoom call or some type, they know there's somebody else on the other end who's just listening there as a impartial observer. What the best part of my job is, is looking at them and talking to them and asking them more empowering questions to make sure that I understood, to make them feel heard, to let them know that I might not understand exactly what you're going through, but I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to <clears throat> get at least as close as possible to understanding, to empathizing with you, to being there for you. Because what my job is then to do is Maybe they're not seeing an angle that because they're emotionally charged, because they're feeling down, they're feeling weak at this moment, because they're been so beat down that they don't see the other angles. They don't see what's going on that's good in their life, that's positive. And I'm not here to throw that sunshine up them and say, oh yeah, well I understand, but all of these good things. No, I want them to sit in that space. I want them to lean in to what's coming up for them. I want them to lean into that pain of that divorce. I want them to lean into that pain of the breakup. I want them to lean into whatever is causing this uncomfort. I don't want them to run away from it. And a lot of people well-meaning people, well-intentioned people, friends, family, will always try to make you look at the bright side when maybe you don't fucking want to look at the bright side. You want to look at that dark side. You want to 
stare right at that dark side and understand, okay, I get it. I understand. I need to feel this. This darkness needs to envelope over me. It needs to wash completely over me <clears throat> so that I'm not pushing it down. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling this sadness. I'm feeling this frustration. I'm feeling whatever fucking emotion you're feeling as a guy. You need to feel it and you need to lean into it because if you can't feel it, you can't heal it. I know it sounds gay, guys, but I'm, I'm fucking dead serious. What I don't want is another generation of guys who take permanent decisions for temporary problems. I can't say the word because I'm trying to get this channel to grow. You know what I'm talking about. A lot of guys find out that they feel like their only way out is to take this permanent solution. And maybe their situation really sucks. Maybe there's something going on in their life where they just can't seem to find a way to get through it, around it, under it, over it. But that's the whole point, guys. Maybe the point of this in your life is to not get through it, not get under it, not get around it, not try to go over it, not try to bury down. Is to stand right the fuck with your problem, toe to toe, and say, okay, I've been pushing this thing down for so long and now it's become a monster. I need to attack this monster. I need to feel this monster. I need to understand what actions I've caused throughout my life that have caused this occurrence. Maybe it is a divorce. Maybe it has been your fault. Maybe you have been a shitty husband. Maybe you haven't been the greatest father. None of that matters because of what you're feeling right now is still true. Don't wash that away. Don't minimize the fact that because maybe you haven't done the things that you should have done or you could have done better. Don't minimize the fact that you're not feeling something, that you're trying to push it away because you don't deserve or you don't have the right to feel it. You have the single right to feel this. But what you don't have a right to do is hide from it anymore. What you don't have a right to do is to push it down and pretend everything's okay because it's not gonna be okay. You have to confront the problem. You have to confront whatever that situation is. Again, a lot of it around for me has to do with guys who come to me and they, ah, I really wish I could have a girlfriend. A girlfriend's gonna solve fucking everything. I'm such a loser. My job sucks. I, j I don't have a social circle, but if I just had a girlfriend, man, then, then fuck dude, my whole life, I would be noticed. People would notice me. They say, this girl is with that guy. This guy has to be a winner. They don't do the deep work. They don't do the secondary. That, that's, that's surface level. They don't real, really understand that when they say these things to themselves, guys, they're saying, I don't like myself. I wouldn't even date me. I don't find myself attractive. I'm not amazing. All this anxiety that they have, all of this depression that they have, all of this, what if, what if I did this? What if I did that? They get this paralysis of analysis. They always want to do something so much better. They want to level themselves up, but they freeze because they don't want to be seen. They don't want to be seen for the frauds that they think they are, and you're not a fraud. You might be making mistakes in your life. You might be going through that divorce, that bad breakup. You might be going through something, but you're not a fraud. You made a mistake. You can correct that mistake. You're not of no value. You might feel at this point that you're very low in value, but that's okay. If you squash this down, if you, if you pretend that this is not happening, and then you just mask your problems with alcohol or porn or gaming or randomly going out and trying to find hookers. I've heard it all before, guys. This is what guys try to do. They try to mask that deep-seated problem that they've developed all their life by pushing down their feelings, their emotions, their insecurities, by pushing all of this down. They've actually created a monster within themselves. The only way they can answer for that, the only way that they can heal from that is to confront that monster and lean into that pain. It could have been years of trauma. And I'm not talking about trauma of getting beaten up or people talking bad about you. <clears throat> trauma comes in so many different forms. But if you don't recognize it, 
because it's not there, but you feel it's there and you keep pushing it down and you're masking your problems with drugs and you're masking your problems with alcohol and porn and gaming and, and you get a high because you get a girlfriend but you don't know what to do with her and you put all of your emotional problems on her and she doesn't want to deal with that. She wants to deal with the guy who is emotionally stable, who's emotionally centered. This is when you need help. And sometimes it might be therapy that you need. I'm man enough to admit I've been through therapy. This is how I got into coaching. I'm not willing to go back through school to become a therapist. I will be a coach. I will help you through it. I will be that person who you can call, who you can email, who you can text, who you need to talk to. I will be that guy for you if you can be the guy for yourself who can show up for themselves every day and say, I'm not perfect, man. But I'm trying. I've made mistakes and I'm starting to own up to those mistakes. I'm not cowtailing and I'm not putting my head in the fucking stand anymore. I'm going to take each of my mistakes, each of the burdens that I put onto myself and maybe my family, I'm going to start picking those apart one by one. And I'm going to start attacking each one of those. I'm going to start leveling myself up <clears throat> to be the man I know I am. When I look in the mirror, I see broken. When I look in the mirror, I see sadness, but I also see behind that. I also see the man that I'm supposed to be. The guy, maybe in high school, I had so much fucking potential. I had so many things I wanted to do with my life, and here I am. What happened, man? I, 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 I was young and in love and just has so many ideals about myself and my future and my family and now here I am in this pit. And I put myself here. And if I put myself here, I can pull myself out. But it's going to take some work. It's not going to take watching some fucking videos like this and feeling good for a second and getting a little bit of motivation. And then what happens, guys? Nothing. Because you're not putting action behind the work. You're not doing the work. I coach a lot of guys and they pay me a lot of money and I end up refunding them their money because they're not doing the work and I'm not going to take their fucking money because they feel good by me talking to them and they're not willing to change. They feel like they want to change. They know they want to change. But when it comes to actually creating that plan and starting that plan and putting themselves out there to know that they're going to be a different guy. They start pulling that mask off themselves. They realize, oh my God, people are really going to see me. They're going to see who I am. My friends are going to laugh at me because I'm changing. I can't have that. I got to keep this mask on. I can't, I, I, I can't start... I can't start doing these. I'm always drinking on a, on a Friday. What if I just have one? And you start making deals with yourself but you're really making deals with the devil because you know what you need to do. You just are choosing not to do it. This is the difference between having that winner's mindset. You might be in a losing season of your fucking life, but you have a winner's mindset and you're willing to pull your dick out of that dirt and realize, okay, I fucked up. I went down the wrong path, but no more. I'm going to go back up this road. <laughs> I'm going to regroup, retool, reheal, and I'm going to go down the right road. That's a winner. These guys, they get it. They get to me a lot more because they're sounding perfect. They're telling me that they know they fucked up. They're telling me that they want to change. They're telling me that they're ready to make massive changes in their life. And when they get down under the fire, when, when people start questioning them, like, hey, Greg, you're changing a little bit. What's going on? Are you getting soft on me? Greg, what, you know, you're talking different. They start getting people to start actually seeing them, seeing their vulnerability, seeing that they're trying different things on. They go right back to their old fucking self because they want to put that mask back on because it's for them, it's so much easier to be hidden among the fucking sheep than it is to take that fucking mask off. I'm like, yeah, here I am, motherfucker. Yeah, I got problems. Yeah, I'm not always emotionally stable. 
I got fucking feelings too. I'm pissed off sometimes. I'm happy sometimes. I know I fucked up. I'm not perfect. <clears throat> I know society wants me to be perfect, to be a man, but we're not. We need other men to talk to. We need coaching programs like this. Maybe you don't fucking like my coaching program. I'll put you in with other coaches. The point is you need to be around other men who can help not only level you, but hold you to a standard and say, look at you're fucking up. A lot of men in their life have friends and those friends do not want to see you grow. They only want to see you grow to a level, but when you start suppressing them, when you start getting higher than them, when you start making changes in your life, you're shining a spotlight on their failure, you're holding a mirror up to them. And they start realizing, they start resenting you like, fuck Greg, fuck, you know, fuck that, you know? Greg used to be here every Friday drinking beer with us, talking about women, talking about our wives. He's not even here anymore. He's hanging out, having date night with his wife. He's changing, he's turning into a bitch, no. You don't need friends like that. They're trying to hold you down. They only want you to succeed just a little bit. But as soon as you start getting wins, they're gonna write you off. They're gonna start calling you names. They're gonna start testing you in a way. They're gonna start testing that fortitude and say, listen, nah, this isn't him. Let's just call him a pussy and see what he comes back. And a lot of these guys, they kowtow back to that group. They'd rather be seen among those sheep than they'd rather be not seen for who they really are. They want to be a carbon copy of everybody else. But in their heart, this is what pisses me off and what, what makes me even more sad for these guys. In their heart, they have that heart of a lion. They really want it, but they don't have that fortitude. They don't have that determination. They don't have that discipline. They don't have that compass that's going to drive them like the lion does. A lot of people have hearts like lions. It's cool to say I'm a lion. It's cool to say I'm the king of the fucking jungle. But if you keep doing the same thing that's got you to where you are right now, and you're wondering why your fucking life sucks, you're wondering why you're in the pits, then you're not a lion. You might have the heart of a lion, but you're not doing what you need to do to pull yourself up and your family if you have one. Look, it sucks being a man sometimes, especially in this society when over the last 20 or 30 years, we've been demonized as being the patriarch. We have too much testosterone. We're this, we're not enough that. All of these things, it sucks to be a man, but the best thing about being a man is that we create our own value. Either you build yourself up or you're gonna be a loser. That's it. And so the choice is yours. Yeah, I can build myself up. I can be the best fucking version of myself. I might not be the tallest. I might not be the smartest. I might not be the best looking. But for who I am in all fucking realms, I've done the work. I've done everything I can to level myself up. And by that token, you are a high value man. You're a high prized man. You know who you are. You've been through the fucking, the fucking shit of stuff. You've been through it all. And here's the best part, once you get through it, you help another man up. You pull that other mo motherfucker up and say, dude, I was exactly where you are. I'm pulling you up now, let's go, let's do this. And you start helping another man. And once he gets to that level, he helps somebody else. This is how we get out of this bullshit that we're in right now where we're demonized for being men. That's all I got on this, guys. My name is Jared, this is Magnetic Men's Club. I want you guys all to be the best versions you can be. And I know I say that and a lot of other people say that, but God made you fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't disappoint him. Don't disappoint yourself, man. Don't disappoint your family. Do you have to be perfect? Fuck no, I'm not perfect. But every day, I try to get a little bit better. If you're coming to me for coaching, and I'm listening to your story, and I'm gonna love you either way. I'm gonna be there for you. I'm gonna listen to your story. I'm gonna offer you some perspective. I'm gonna try to give you a little bit of guidance, ask you some empowering questions that maybe will help stimulate you so that maybe you can create a new reality for yourself. I'm gonna do that for you. I'm gonna help you, but you gotta help yourself. A lot of guys just want another person to do the work for them and pay them. It's not how coaching works. It's not how life works. That's all I got on this. My name is Jared Schumacher. This is Magnetic Men's Club, and we'll talk soon.